photographers. You may be wondering if the Fujifilm X-E4 or the X-S10 is the better choice for you, your photography needs, and your style. In this video, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two cameras, giving you all the details about external things like controls and dials, internal things like the menu features, and finally some operational tests, burst buffers, and video overheating. Now, for the most part, I'm not going to discuss the things that are the same. So if it's not mentioned, it's safe to assume it is the same. And there's much more that's similar than different. And if there's some issue that doesn't get covered, please ask me in the comments. Now, in this video, you'll see the XE4 on your left, the XS10 on your right. Uh, in February 2021, before the XE4 is officially shipping, there is a price difference, but that may change. They both have the same 26 megapixel 4th generation X-Trans sensor and processor, and they share nearly all of the technical specifications for stills, continuous modes, and video. That means there's probably little reason for comparing images or video. And there's really only one headline difference. The XS10 has in-body stabilization, the XE4 does not. Although they are similar in size, the XE4 is smaller in all dimensions. Thanks to the grip, the XS10 is 32 millimeters deeper than 5 wider and 8 taller. Both have magnesium top plates. The remainder is plastic. The XE4 has no grip, front or back. And the XS10 also has a small thumb rest on the back. In my hand, the surface of the XS10 is slightly less slippery. And the XE4 does have an optional extra cost grip, which mounts in the tripod socket, and a thumb rest which fits in the flash shoe. The XE4 weighs 325 grams before lens, battery, and XD card, and the XS10 is about 24% heavier, 428 grams. However, when the grip and thumb rest are added, the XE4 is 418 grams. They are both small cameras, and one of the disadvantages of small size is that the lens mount is close to the bottom plate. Some of Fujifilm's lenses extend below the level of the bottom, an issue when a camera is on a tripod. However, the XE4's optional grip raises the camera enough to overcome this. Another justification for adding this to your kit. Now, both have a 0.39 inch 2.36 M.0 OLED viewfinder with the same magnification, angle of view, and diopter range. On the XE4, the viewfinder is left justified, rangefinder style, for right eyed photographers. The XS10s, with a larger eye cup, is centered over the lens. Also, because it extends slightly further back from the body, it's a little more comfortable. The XE4's viewfinder sensor is to the right of the eye cup. The XS10's is below. The XS10 has a key to the right. It's white balance by default, but can be customized. Both have a 3x2 aspect 3-inch touchscreen LCD. The XE4's has 1.62 M-dots. The XS10's has 1 M-dots. The XE4's LCD swivels up all the way to face forward. The XS10 swivels out and rotates slightly further down. It also closes to the body for protection. I find the XE4, with the tab on the left, to be slightly easier to maneuver. It's harder to grab the XS10 screen, which has a reset on the right. They are both touchscreens with identical features, including four swipe motions to activate various customizable functions found in button settings. They both have an on-off switch surrounding the shutter release. 
The XE4 shutter release requires slightly more pressure, and it supports a cable release. The XE4 has a mode dial that offers only auto and program, and is also used to select shutter speed. When the shutter speed is set using the dial, the camera switches automatically to shutter priority. If you also have the lens at a manual aperture setting, the camera switches to manual mode. There's no aperture priority as such. However, in program mode, the front command dial sets the shutter in a kind of program shift way. Uh, press the front dial to have it set the aperture instead. But when D-range priority is on, this feature is not available. The XS10's mode dial operates in the normal way, with auto, program, shutter, an aperture priority, and manual modes. There's a scene mode setting and a filter setting. The XE4 has no scene mode. Filters are selected from the drive menu. The XS10 has a video mode setting on the mode dial. That's also a drive mode option on the XE4. The XS10 has four custom settings on the mode dial. Uh, the XE4 has seven custom sets, but they are set and accessed from screen three of the image quality menu. Both have keys for ISO and the Q menu. ISO is not labeled on the XE4. Both keys can be customized on both cameras. The XS10 has a red video record button to record video from any position on the mode dial. The blank key on the XE4 can be assigned to video record for the same purpose. The XE4's exposure compensation or EV dial is labeled three steps up and down and a C position, which enables up to five stops using the front dial. The unlabeled dial on the XS10 is also EV and can be set to five up and down. Neither camera allows this control to be customized. Both have a front command dial, which is context sensitive. The XE4s has a custom setting and can be pressed for additional functionality. The XS10 has a second unlabeled dial on the left side. It mostly defaults to film simulation, but has five pages of customizations. On the XS10, a switch releases the built-in flash. There's no flash on the XE4. They both have a joystick and two keys on the back. The joystick on the XS10 is slightly higher on the body, making it easier to find when my eye is in the viewfinder. The XE4's keys are slightly raised from the body. The XS10's are flush. The top panel keys are raised on both. There are three to the right of the viewfinder on the XE4. A key to open the drive menu, which is also used as delete in playback, and the play or review key. The same two keys are found to the left of the viewfinder on the XS10. These keys can't be customized on either camera. On the XS10, to the right, there's an exposure lock and AF on. Both can be customized. There are eight pages of options. The XE4 has a combined exposure focus lock key. It has a very similar eight pages of options. The right side ports Mic Remote, USB-C, and Micro HDMI are the same. And on the XS10, the mic has its own dedicated cover, making it a little more useful for vloggers with external mics. The speaker port is on the left side of the XS10 and on the bottom of the XE4. Internal mic ports are on top of the XE4 and beside and slightly underneath the viewfinder hump on the XS10. The XE4 has slots to connect the strap. The XS10s are a little more usual with the, the small eyelet and a removable clip that holds the strap. 
Uh, the XE Force tripod socket is not centered and so close to the battery door that you'll have to remove your tripod's quick plate to change batteries. The GRIPS tripod mount is centered, but still too close. Both combine the battery and SD card slot on the bottom. Both max to SDXC UHS-1 type cards. And although they have the same 126S battery, the XE4 is rated for 460 images, the XS10 only 325. Battery life for video on the XE4 is rated at 45 minutes, on the XS10 it's 40 minutes. I've already pointed out some of the differences on the drive menu. Same burst settings, 8 mechanical, 10 and 20 electronic, and with a crop up to 30. With the 8 per second mechanical burst, the XE4 takes 8 JPEG images per second and never falters. 479 images in 60 seconds, impressive. Less impressive with 30 per with the electronic shutter and the crop. 25 images in the first second, then a sustained 10 or 11 frames per second. 334 images in 30 seconds. The buffer clears very quickly, less than 10 seconds. The results from the XS10 are absolutely identical. Then low at 3, 4, and 5, ISO bracket up to one stop, white balance bracket with three levels, four brackets for exposure, film simulation, dynamic range, and focus, five levels of HDR, panorama, and multi-exposure on the XE4. They're separated on the XS10 to allow the XE4 to include filters and video mode. Both are rated for 30 minutes of recording at 25 Celsius. However, their small size and resulting propensity to overheat makes them less suitable for dedicated video recording. Using the highest quality 4K 200 megabit data rate in a 20 Celsius room, the XE4's overheating icon appeared after 13 minutes. It turned red after 15 minutes and turned off a minute later. The XS10's overheating icon turns yellow at 17 minutes but keeps recording until it reaches its artificially imposed limit at 30 minutes. When it ran out of card space nine minutes later, the warning was still yellow and the battery was nearly drained. That's worrisome, because video features on both are really outstanding. 4K at both video and cinema resolutions, F-Log, 10-bit 422 HDMI output. Instead of a grip option, what the XE4 really needs is a heatsink. I tried X-Webcam on both. Neither showed signs of overheating. Then the menu, again, pretty much identical, with a few exceptions. The XE4 has seven custom settings selected in the menu. The XS10 has four selected from the mode dial. And the edit menu includes five dial settings not covered by the XE4. Otherwise, they save the same parameters, including white balance shift. On the XS10, the scene is selected in the menu. The XE4 doesn't have scene modes. On the XS10, filters are selected in the camera menu. The XE4's filters are selected from the drive menu, a more intuitive option. On the XE4, the multiple exposure mode is set from the camera menu. On the XS10, on the drive menu, again, the more intuitive operation. In photometry, which is available only when face detect is off, Neither have a highlight mode. Same shutter options, neither has electronic front curtain. And while we're here, let's have a listen to the mechanical shutter for a one second exposure. The XE4 and the XS10. The XS10, which includes in-body stabilization, has more stabilization options. Both have limited video settings in the stills menu. Again, the XS10 has more stabilization modes. 
There are some minor variations in the My Menu settings reflecting the small menu differences. Both have the same limitations. Very few of the setup options are available. The XE4's regulatory panel shows model 02, the XS10 is 01. The XE4's regulatory panel also includes a Chinese screen. The XE4 has three keys with custom assignments, the XS10 has six, and a customizable dial. The assignments have minor differences, reflecting small operating differences and the lack of stabilization on the XE4. The command dial on the front of the XE4 can be customized, the XS10s cannot. On the XE4, when the lens's aperture ring is at A, the command dial is an option, and on the XE4, for lenses with no aperture ring, there's a setting to select how the aperture is set. In power options, the XS10's boost has a frame rate priority setting. Both come with a USB cable to charge the camera, but neither have a charger or wall plug for the USB cable. Although there's no image for the XE4 yet, both are supported by Fujifilm's camera remote app. A last thing, because I know you'll ask, this XE4 is labeled made in Indonesia. This XS10 says made in China. I know which of these I prefer, but I leave it to you to decide. I can't tell which is best for you. Now, hopefully, I've not overlooked anything, but as always, feel free to post your relevant questions and civil comments. I will read and reply to all. Now, if you enjoy my videos, it'd be great if you'd become a subscriber. Just click the button below, or you could click the Join button and become a member. Membership perks include a private email address where members are whitelisted so you can correspond directly with me. But subscribers need not worry. No content will be behind a paywall. Please choose the option that suits your needs. Ah, thanks for watching. Stay safe.